In this video, I'll show you how to use fetch with real-world examples. So what is fetch? Well, I have the Mozilla web docs open here, and this is the best place to find information on anything JavaScript. So fetch was added to JavaScript in the ES6 update, and it allows us to get data from a local or remote file, or from a database through an API, or we can push data to a database through an API. And it's similar to the XML HTTP request, but better. Fetch is promise-based. So if you're unfamiliar with promises, I have a video that explains them, and I'll put a link in the description below. But the easiest way to explain fetch is to just show you. So I have a basic JSON file here, and it's a simple array of people. So we have John Doe, we have his address, his email, and his phone. And then we have his wife Jane Doe, and all of her information. And we have their son Bob Doe, and all of his information. Alright, so what we'll do in our JavaScript is we're going to fetch the information. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll call fetch, and we'll use the URL or the file or whatever it is we're trying to get. And again, fetch is promise-based, so we'll use dot then. So we're going to use an arrow function to get our response, and this response is a stream of data, so we have to do something with it. And we know that this data is JSON, so we're going to use response.json. So it's going to return the JSON data. We'll use another dot then. And we have our JSON data. And we're just going to console log the data. So let me save that. And we'll see in our console over here, there's the data. So we have an array here of our three individuals. Now I can also show you what the stream looks like. So let's modify this. And we'll console log the response. And we need to return the JSON. And I'll save that. And now you see here our response. So in order to do something with this response, we parse it into JSON. All right, next I'll show you an example of fetching an image. So again, we're going to use fetch. And for our URL, we'll use unsplash it. And we're specifying the image size that we want here. And then in our dot then, we're going to use dot blob on our response. So that is going to get our image. So with these fetch responses, there are a few options. So the main ones that you'll use are blob, JSON, and text. So we're returning our blob to our next dot then. And then in here, we're just going to create an element. So we'll have an image here where we're creating an element. And then we're going to set the source of the element to our blob. Now we can't just set it to the blob. We have to use the URL create object URL method, and then we pass blob within that. And then we are selecting the body and appending the image to that. All right, so I'll hit save. And there we go. There's our image. If I hit refresh, a random image will pop up every time. In our next example, we're going to fetch some posts from a service called JSON Placeholder. In order to do that, I need to set up the HTML first. So I have some here I'm going to uncomment. So I have this index.html file, and it's very basic. We have a h1, my blog posts. We have a section with an ID of posts, and that's where all of our posts are going to go. And then we're going to use a template to create those posts. So our template has an ID of post template. Within that, we have a div with the class of post. So here's the actual post. Within each post, we're going to have an image, an h4, and a paragraph. So the classes on those are post image, post title, and post body. All right, now that we have that set up, let's go to our main.js. And I've got a couple of constants set up here. We have our post section. So that is our query selector. We're selecting the posts ID. And then our post template. So here we're selecting our post template. All right, I'm going to write this one a little bit differently. I'm going to use the async await method instead of the normal promise method with the dot then. And if you're not familiar with async await, I have a video on that as well. I'll put a link in the description. So we're going to create an async function here. And we'll name it get data. Within the function, we're going to create a constant called post stream. And this is going to equal await fetch. And I'm just going to paste this in here. 
So JSON placeholder.typeycode.com slash posts, and that is going to give us 100 posts. If you just go to JSON placeholder.typeycode.com, you'll see instructions on how to use the service. And they can provide many different types of JSON data that you can use in testing. So that is going to get us our stream, and then we're going to create another constant, name that posts. So these are the actual posts. So we're going to await again. And that is the post stream dot JSON. So you see here in two lines of code, we did the same as we did before instead of a dot then and then using an arrow function to get the JSON and then another dot then to then do something with the posts. We just did that in two lines. So again, this is going to return 100 posts and I just want to get the first nine. I'm going to display these in a grid with three columns. So nine would be the perfect number. So I'm going to create a constant of I equals zero so that we can keep track of how many we have. Posts is an array. So we're going to use the for each high order array function. And then we'll say post and then arrow function. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to iterate I. So we'll do I plus plus. So that will make it one initially. And then we'll say if I is less than 10. So if it's one through nine, then keep going. And now we need to get our title and our body. Before we go any further, actually, let's see what we have here so that you can see what we're working with. So let me console log our posts. Let me pull up the console. And so we're going to console log the post. But before we can do that, we actually have to call the function. So we'll say get data. And now I can run it. I'll hit save. And there we go. We see an array here of 100 posts. Each post consists of an ID, a body, a title, and a user ID. All right, so what we need to get out of here is we're interested in the title and the body. All right, so I'll comment that out. And then in here, we're going through each post, and so we want to get the title. So we'll say const title equals post.title, and then const body equals post dot body. All right, next is where all the magic happens. So we're going to use that template to create a new element. So we're going to say const new post equals document dot import node. And that is going to be our post template dot content. And then we're going to say true. All right, so what this is doing is document.import node and then post template is what we defined up here. So here's our post template that is just selecting our template element. All right, so post template dot text content. No, that should not be text content. That should just be content. All right, so post template dot content. So that's what we're getting. That's what we're importing. And then the second selection here we're set to true. So import node returns a copy of a node. When we have this set to true, the copy also includes the node's descendants. So let me go back to the HTML. If I did not include true, then the contents of this post class would not be imported. It would only import the direct descendants of post template, which would just be this div and nothing below it. So we're creating a new element. And so now we need to create a constant of post title. That is going to equal the new post dot query selector post title. All right. And then we'll create another constant of post body. And that equals our new post dot query selector and then post body. Okay, so we've created a new element and now we're using that new element to select its content. So we're selecting the post title and the post body so that we can then manipulate them. So now that we have that, we're going to use the post title and we're going to set the inner text to the title. 
and then the post body will set the inner text to the body. Okay, so we pull, we extracted the title and the body from our data. We created a new element. We're selecting items from within the element, and then we're setting those to the data that we've received. All right, our last thing that we have to do here is we're going to say post section append child new post. So with each post that we get, we're going to append that to our DOM. And we're only going to do that for the first nine times, not all 100. All right, so let me save that and we should see some posts. There we go. And get rid of the console. All right, that looks good. So now what I want to do is I want to also have an image on each of these posts. So in order to do that, we're going to use another fetch. So I could make another constant here and await a new fetch, but that is going to be the same image for each one. So what I want to do is I want to fetch this inside of our for each so that we have a unique image for each one. So I'll do that right here after we get our title and our body. We'll do fetch, unsplash it, and we want a 300 by 200 image. Instead of doing the async await, we're going to just use a normal promise here. So we'll do dot then response arrow function return the response dot blob. And then dot then we've returned our blob, another arrow function. And then within this, now that we have our image, our blob here, we're going to now move all of this into our promise. So once we've gotten our image, now we want to write to the DOM. All right, so now we need to add the image here. So we'll create another constant and call that post image equals new post dot query selector. And that was post image. All right, and then let's set the image source. So post image dot source is going to equal. Again, we need to use the URL create object URL and we'll pass that the blob. And that should do it. Let's save that. And there we go. It looks a little bit better if we uh, ex expand this a bit. Nice. With anything promise related, we always want to do some error handling. And so we could wrap all of this in a try catch or on our get data, we could, since it's a promise, we could do a dot catch and then get our error and just console log the error. And that, so that will log any errors from our async await, but it would not log any errors that we get from our fetch that is running within our for each. So for that, we again, we could do as a try catch or we could just do a dot catch after that. Just like that. Now to show you that these catches will work, let me open up the console again. And in here, let's just throw an error. All right, I'll save that. And there we go, we have an error from line 21. So this is not, not line 28, it's line 21. That's where our catch is. Now if I throw an error here in this fetch, let's see where that pops up. All right, let me save that. And all right, and so we have to comment this one out because it's gonna stop there. All right, so now we're getting an error on line 52. And that is our catch error. So these are working properly. All right, now let's next look at how we can save a post. So if we wanna submit a new post, we'll use the JSON placeholder again. Um, but first let's create a post. So we'll name this um, 
const new post. And we'll make that equal to some JSON. So that's going to be title. And we'll say the title is new post title. And then in the body, we'll say awesome post paragraph. And lastly, we'll need the user ID. And we'll just set that to any number. All right, now let's create a function here. Well, it's going to be a constant. We'll say create new post. And that is going to equal post arrow function. Within there, we'll set a constant of options. So we'll need to set our options for our fetch. And that will make sense in a minute here. So our method by default on fetch is get. But in this instance, we want to post. We'll set our body to json.stringify the post. And then our headers be new headers. And then in here, we'll set the content type will equal uh, application JSON. All right, then in here, we're going to return our fetch. All right, so we're going to use the JSON placeholder again. Now, fetch will actually accept two arguments. So the first is the URL, and then the second would be our options. Then we'll use our dot then, and we'll say response arrow function, and then response.json. Now we have our response parsed. We'll use another dot then, and we'll get our post arrow function. And then let's just console log our posts. And of course we want to do some error handling. So let's add our catch error error function console error the error All right so now we have our post and we're going to post that but in order to do that we'll need to call the function right so it was create new post and we're going to pass it new post All right so let's run that and see what we get and there we go it returns our post so on json placeholder there are 100 posts in their database. So we passed it the title, the body, and the user ID of one. Um, and then it passes us back what we sent it, and then also the ID of 101. So now we know that it added one post to the database. Of course, this is a placeholder. It's, it's not actually adding anything to the database, but this is mimicking the addition to the database. So again, with a fetch, the default method is get, uh, but we can use post. We can also use put, patch, and delete. So that's going to be it for this video. If you have any more questions on this, add them in the comments. So before you go, if you liked this video, a thumbs up is appreciated. I upload new content every week, so hit subscribe and the bell to get notified. And if you think this video or any of the videos on my channel might be helpful to someone else, please share them. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram at CodeStacker. Thanks for watching.